Oh, yes, yes. Oh, very sorry. All right, Michael, you're coming to Tennessee very soon. I understand you want to burn it up. <laughs> what is all this about? The governor's office called. He wants to know why does this man want to burn up our state? What's going on? The, um, we got a wonderful film called uh, Starman that John Carpenter is directing with Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen. And uh, Tennessee's been chosen for a uh, landing of a satellite from outer space, and it comes into the forest. I'm going to be shooting outside of Knoxville, and it starts a forest fire. And I was talking to John Carpenter. I said, "How um, how are we gonna how are we gonna do that?" He says, "We're gonna have a fire." So I gather Tennessee's been very cooperative and have an area they want to sort of clear out a little bit, some under underbrush. So we're gonna have a small forest fire, controlled. I understand, controlled. Why do producers? Uh, they're almost like gluttons for punishment. I mean, you just <laughs> finished this great movie, and you've got to go out and promote it, and it's going to be out. But you've still got another one going on, and you overlap yourselves. Why do you do that? It wasn't the plan, Jimmy. Believe me, uh, the, these Romancing the Stone and Starman, both, I started them both five and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened was they both came to fruition at the same time. So I'm actually going to be, be one step removed from Starman. I'm executive producing it, and it's in the good hands of uh, John Carpenter and, and Larry Franco because I'm involved on, on this uh, and, and the opening of, of Romancing the Stone. But that's just the way, that was the draw of the cards. Uh, I'm, I feel lucky that at least I got you know, these two pictures going, and both of them are good, but that wasn't the plan. As an actor, I'm sure this movie is very special to you because it's right now. You know, it's the culmination of five years of hard work. But where does it really stand as, uh, as far as your other films with you? I mean, uh, is it in enjoyment or in pride? Well, as an actor? Well, I, I like it a lot because uh, it's a different type of role for me. Uh, to play, you know, you, you, I'm in a situation, I'm never a fly on the wall. People never tell me or I never hear what they really think of you. I guess they think I know what's going on. But the fact was, I did so many of these sort of morally responsive roles, whether it was Star Chamber as a judge or with the China Syndrome, that uh, this sort of light, fun kind of character, uh, who anybody who knows me says, you know, you've been getting away with murder, man. It's about mm -hmm. time you played a part that was a little closer to yourself, like this mm -hmm. part in Romancing the Stone. So I've enjoyed it, and people said, gee, I didn't know you could do that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I love kind of doing a little comedy, you know. Uh, I mean, I really got a kick out of, uh, uh, out of this picture. It was a lot of fun. So um, I'm, I'm real proud of it. Are you an athletic kind of guy? Uh, I, mean, I know you did a runner, <clears throat> but, you, you know, you had to do a hell of a lot of <laughs> Did a lot of stunts. There. We did a, a lot of stunts. Um, I, I'm a little less, so I had a real bad knee operation, a skiing accident. Uh, I enjoy sports a lot. Uh, you also have to be careful in a picture like this. You can't overextend yourself because if you get hurt, you know, you shut down the whole film. So you try to find that, uh, that balance. But yes, I enjoy the physicalities of making pictures. I used to do a lot on the streets of San Francisco. I find it a way of relaxing from the kind of sitting around waiting to go on. It's good to get out of breath every once in a while. It makes you feel good. All right. It says this person is a little bit like you. Is there a little bit of a hippie in Michael Douglas somewhere? Oh yeah, I there was. I'm a product of the '60s. Uh, I uh, I enjoyed it. Grew up in uh, in California, and there's a definite uh, definite part of of me from uh, kind of a throwback from another era, uh, living some of those values out. Sure, uh, there's not much room for it in, uh, in the world of big business and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I enjoyed that period. Let me do some. Uh let me have you some one or two sentence comments about some of these things I'm going to throw out here real quick. Carl Malden. Um, I love him. He, uh, he taught me a work ethic like nobody ever seen before. He maintained the quality of that television series. And um, I, miss, I miss seeing him more often. Do you have an American Express card? Mm, after this picture, I do. <laughs> Jane Fonda. Jane... Uh, ha Jane Fonda gets more done in a day than anybody I've ever seen. Uh, she has the ability to do 11 different things at the same time. Uh, I was producing uh, uh, with her company and, and acting in China Syndrome, and I f still felt like I was doing nothing when I was around her. Uh, the Academy Awards. Um, I think it's going to be a, a Terms of Endearment uh, sweep. It reminds me a lot of the year Cuckoo's Nest uh, was on that kind of same emotion. We had nine nominations when the when the big five that year, and I think Terms is going to get a lot of, lot of awards. How important are the are awards to you? Are they? 
Well, the uh, uh, sure there. Or they're, is money more important? The box office, or is well, it I think it's a combination. I mean, certainly a nomination is great. A win is fine. If you're if you have a chance, if you're the producer and it's the best picture, it can mean twenty million dollars in the box office. So that that's that's nothing to sneeze about. Uh, running, since we mentioned it before. Uh, running. I defend it was not a, a, a popular picture. I got in better shape than I ever did in my life. Uh, we came out okay. It was, it followed the China Cinema. It was a little picture that should have just had a life of, of its own and came and went and was, I felt attacked a little too hard, particularly after I think, in, in after the China Syndrome. Spartacus. One of my father's uh, favorite. Um, I think it put me out of the acting business for a number of years. You know, we used to be as kids saying, geez, how are we ever going to do it? Look, the old man's hanging up there on the cross. And he's, <laughs> he's leading the armies and everything like that. I said, this is a tough act to follow. Uh, I, I thought, a lot of people don't realize that my father produced that picture too. And uh, that really has been the biggest advantage of being a second generation is learning the production and what was going on behind the scenes. It was an amazing production. Is your family pretty close? You seem we to have are. a lot of, you know, families involved in these you know, brothers and. We are. We're we're a very tight family. Well, my brother Joel was a co-producer and sort of watched my back, while I was on camera and everything in, in terms of uh, shooting this. And uh, uh, obviously, my father and I live really close to each other. And he saw *Romancing the Stone* last week, and I think was 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 real impressed and loved to get his opinion. He's still going strong. He's still is going he is he a lot like the? The Spartacus kind of guy? Is he a tough guy? Well, oh, he's As tough. a father? Yeah, he is funny. We were talking, Jimmy, the other day, and uh, he says, you know, man, I'm so glad I can finally talk to you. You know, you've, you've mellowed out to me, Michael. You're, you're more relaxed. You're easier to talk with. I looked at him and I said, Dad, did you ever think maybe it's you who relaxed and mellowed out? And he said, what are you talking about? I think, it is. I think it's a combination. He, he's, he, he's great. I think he's sort of side of relief and his sons are all off on, on their own and doing fine and it's, it's given him a, a satisfaction. Hope you don't find offense in this but as I watched this movie last night I kept seeing Kurt Douglas up there a lot and it's, I've never seen that in you and I've seen all your right. films. I've never noticed it before. I mean you noticed it a little bit but I really noticed it last night in a little bit of acting style and in physical characteristics you're looking more like your father. Well I'm um, half of him is me. Uh, that's the truth. I think it's well, he slugged me for that comment. I don't know if <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think it's probably true. Uh, I, I must say quite er, quite consciously in my early career, I shied away mm -hmm. from any mannerisms uh, that might have been like my father's uh, in a sort of a, a struggle or an idea to create my own identity. Uh, I guess what's happened besides whatever physicalities are going on, that I just feel confident that there are parts of me that are similar to him, which allow me a bigger range, and uh, I'm, I'm happy. You know. As a film supervisor, since you wear both hats, in the uh, brush off of all this the Twilight Zone disaster and all that, this was a very dangerous looking film anyway. How was that in your mind very much? Yes, it was. Uh, actually, we, we uh, started filming this soon after the um, Twilight Zone disaster. Vic Morrow was somebody I'd worked with a lot on Streets of San Francisco, was, was a friend. And it's a major responsibility. Uh, you have got to work things out very carefully, uh, particularly in a film that had as many stunts um, as this did. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you, you just have to be responsible. I mean, accidents do, do happen, and they're multiplied by the, the increased amount of activity. But I'm, I'm fortunate enough to say that we had a couple of minor problems, but we got through it okay. How many restless nights during this past five years have you spent worrying about this film, either as an actor, as a producer, as anything? Well, once, not too many until once the production started. I mean, you struggle through the years to get it made, and then you put it to, put it to bed for a while, and you try. But once it got going, uh, I can't, I'd be a fool to tell you there were not a lot of restless nights. It was a tough shoot. Uh, when you have that responsibility, you, every once in a while you look around at 250 people out in the middle of the jungle and it's pouring rain and you got mudslides going on and there's a little expression called a runaway production. It's like this little ghost sitting on your shoulder and say, boy, could, is this going to be it? I mean, are we going to get through it okay? 
uh, plus all the little details uh, that you worry about that you don't have to worry about when you're only acting. So that's why I, I, I think um, this has done it for me as far as wearing both hats and I'm planning on going back east now and just focusing on acting and, and enjoying the freedom of not having to worry about everything else. Well, that follows this next question then. Are you able to have a personal life at all? Not really, Jimmy. I, the way that I've structured it with my family um, is something's got to give and when I'm doing a picture my family takes a back seat and the only reason that they're able to do that is that I then take big chunks of time off to focus only with my family so uh, when Romancing the Stone comes out like March 30th and then I'll wind it up about a week afterwards and then I'm gonna spend the summer with my family and particularly my my son and uh, they all seem to be in sync that seems to be the best way to do it I think for anybody, for getting even this business, it's very tough, especially with newlyweds, trying to struggle with a career and your family at the same time. Something's got to give. What effect uh, did being a Hollywood kid have on you in a in negative or positive sense? Are you, obviously, you learned the craft, and that was an advantage, and you had a lot of connections, which uh, made it very well. But Well, that, that helps. The, the, the big plus is you just learn, it, as you say, the craft and the business. So. Uh, you can handle the successes and you can handle the failures a, a, a little better. Plus, you just appreciate so much how fortunate you are to be in this. The negative side is, is you are expected to succeed, which is very unrealistic mm -hmm. in, in this day and the age. And if you fail, you get much more tension brought upon. So there's no upside. Um, I mean, when, even after all the struggle of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, people sort of expected it. Uh, after uh, Romancing the Stone now, uh, if you have the kind of success it looks like we're going to have, you, you want to enjoy it a little bit and savor it rather than people just saying, well, of, of course, you know, it comes from the family. What do you expect? It's not that easy. Your family can't do anything um, to help you in the jungles mm -hmm. <laughs> in Mexico or they can't get you put you in a, in a part. But I, you know, I feel fortunate, and um, I'm going to party a little bit after it's all over. How well do you handle criticism? What criticism you've gotten over the years, since you have had big successes and not really big failures, but there have been a few. Well, I'm one of those people who, you know, who never really hear it, except maybe, you know, in critics. I don't enjoy criticism when there's nothing you can do about it. So, for instance, on um, on movies, I love showing, you know, to a lot of people and friends the first cut of the picture and getting as much input as I can because if one person says that something's wrong, you know, I won't listen. But if three or four or five mention the same thing, then you got something to do. Once the movie's over, and other than the roles of, of, of critics who, who you, you, you live with and you, depending how hard your hide is or response, you, you take it, uh, personal criticism I'm not really that that interest to and, and are fairly defensive about because there's nothing I can do about mm -hmm. it at that time. Well, what did you think when you first saw the completed film with people? Were well, you this is that really it was that good. Were you surprised? Well, you know, I'm still feeling it out. This is really one of the first times we've had. We've only shown the picture twice. I showed it once to the studio, three times. Once to the studio. Once to like an audience. Um, uh, of a, like a test audience at the studio, and that wasn't even finished. We've only shown the picture once to a finished audience, which is a whole bunch of you know friends, so-called friends from Hollywood. <laughs> no one's really that uh, <laughs> that happy with your success and getting a response. And now this is the first time we're getting a feedback, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. That's great. Well, I, I really enjoyed uh, the film, and I think a lot of people will see it. And I think, but one thing, because we're we're through, we can get a listening shot and a wide shot here if you would. Uh, I think what'll happen is that the March 30th, whenever it opens that Friday night, there are not going to be as million people out there lined right. up at the door, but it's going to have the reverse pyramid effect. Great. As it, soon as, because uh, I mean, I know I told some people, yeah. a friend of mine went to the thing last night, he's told a lot of people, and he told a radio station program director from Denver yeah. who's going to call Fox and try to get in on the bandwagon of screening it. Wow. So I mean, Great. that's how it's going to do it, yeah. and it's going to be a victim of advertising, it's going to have to have a lot of commercials. Yeah. The name doesn't, you know, so what is this about? Do, yeah. But it's one of these things that I think you'll have to watch twice, which yeah. is also going to help. Sure. Uh, because I'm so stupid sometimes, I didn't see the pitchfork. I, People yeah, out with yeah. me did, but I just don't see things like that sometimes. Yeah, I'm no, wrapped what up comes in watching. At you, it comes at you fast. Yeah, and I'm watching. That's great because you yeah. can watch it again and see sure. all the little things. That was the great thing about uh, Star Wars. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of things in that that I haven't seen. And I love, I'm, I'm real happy about how it, it, it changes tone 